they are also uh, they are also likely to develop these complications, which means that the pregnancy is going to become a complicated pregnancy if it is associated with either of these three conditions. So, therefore, the objective of this slide is to tell you that in order to avoid diabetes mellitus in pregnancy, BMI, appropriate BMI or the average body weight before the start of pregnancy is essential. The second thing, again, relating to weight is the weight gain in pregnancy. And NICE guidelines are very important guidelines, which is the National Institute of Health and Excellence. They say that this, this is a myth that we should eat for two when woman is Madam, I'm mute again. Can you hear me now? Ma'am. So NICE guideline ye hai ki the concept of eating for two is a gone concept and it is not there anymore. NICE guideline also says that 30 minutes of moderate exercise during pregnancy every day is recommended. And NICE guideline also says that the total number of calories per day which need to be increased in pregnancy are only 200 calories and that too during the last three months of pregnancy. So although we are saying that dieting should be avoided, but the number of calories which need to be increased are only in the 7th, 8th and ninth month. What does that mean in terms of gestational diabetes? It means that weight is a modifiable factor and excessive weight gain in pregnancy can be avoided by eating appropriately, by having moderate exercise and not eating for two people. There is a study which shows that gestational weight gain and the gestational diabetes risk are proportional to each other. So excessive weight gain in the first trimester of pregnancy in this study was associated with 80% increased risk of gestational diabetes. Second trimester was not important, but first trimester weight gain was definitely associated with diabetes. So what, the, what does that indicate to us? pregnant She should be counseled that the time that she becomes pregnant, she should have an optimal weight. And weight gain during pregnancy should only be in the optimal range in excessive eating lack of physical activity and eating high calorie stuff should be avoided during pregnancy. Now, this brings us to the diagnosis of gestational diabetes. Now, how do we diagnose gestational diabetes? So screening gestational diabetes and for screening of gestational diabetes, for screening of gestational diabetes, these are the following things. Uh, these are the following parameters. If I have a screening gestational diabetes, so, kiski karu mein maine aapko options di hai. Increasing maternal age and weight, previous history of gestational diabetes, previous macrosomic infant, previous stillbirth or bad history, family history of diabetes, ethnic background. I am sure all of you have selected your choices. Ki mujhe inka gestational diabetes ke liye test karwana hai, ya screen karna hai, ya glucose tolerance test karna hai. Lekin I will surprise you by saying that ye jo maine saare groups banaye mein hai, in mein se kuch bhi ho. Sabki screening on each other. Iska matlab ye hai that a woman of South Asian descent, Pakistani woman who becomes pregnant must have her gestational diabetes screened between 26 and 28 weeks of pregnancy. And the test that you use for screening for diabetes is called the glucose tolerance test. Or your glucose tolerance test ki choice is made choices and for various tests by which diabetes can be screened. But the most popular is the OGTT 75 gram. Iska matlab hai, every woman who becomes pregnant must have her glucose tolerance test done between 26 and 28 weeks of pregnancy, irrespective of the risk factors that she has. This is how you do a 75 gram oral glucose tolerance test. Or iske karne ka tarika ye hai that you ask the woman to fast overnight and in the morning her fasting blood sugar is done. And after fasting blood sugar, she is given 75 grams of dextrose powder as a chilled 25% solution of about 400 cc, which she has to drink in the next five minutes. After this, the samples are collected at one and two hours. And this is the glucose tolerance test. So if you see interpretation, dekhen, to a fasting blood glucose of less than 95 is considered to be normal. One hour less than 180 and two hours less than 155. But you will also be, this is jiska 95 se zata ho blood sugar fasting, 180 se zada ho, 180 or more one hour, or 155 or more two hours, we will label her as gestational diabetic. But when you visit our wards, you will see that one hour ka jo 150 hai, uski bhi hum sugar control kar rahe hai. To wo kya hai? 
وہ یہ ہے کہ اینی بڈی ہو ہیز گاٹ اے بلڈ شوگر بٹوین ون فورٹی اینڈ ون ایٹی will be in the impaired glucose tolerance test range and all the implications of gestational diabetes jo ke full fledged gestational diabetes ki hoti hai wo in mein bhi hongi isliye even if you find that the blood sugar is 150 140 160 after 1 hour you need to monitor these women for them to see that whether they are developing diabetes or not and many a time you would find that their diabetes is also going to be if it is not over diabetes at this time it is going to be screened in a while Now the question is that once you have diagnosed diabetes, how are you going to manage diabetes in pregnancy and labor? So the primary goal of management of di- gestational diabetes is to ensure that the baby and the mother remain normal during pregnancy. The blood sugar or the maternal hyperglycemia is controlled, and hypoglycemia is prevented. If we do these two things, we will ensure that the mother and the baby stay safe at the time of delivery. Now, what are the fetal risks? Now. in women who have got diabetes before they became pregnant there is a four fold increased risk of congenital abnormalities like neural tube defect like cardiac abnormalities early pregnancy losses preterm labor and macrosomia in the women in whom in the women women aap mujhe ek minute dijiye ga ye main iski awaaz band ki band karwa do just give me a second so and that so women who have got pre existing diabetes greater probability of congenital anomalies early pregnancy loss preterm labor and macrosomia and in women in whom gestational diabetes develops there is increased probability of macrosomia shoulder dystocia and birth trauma now how frequently should a woman with uh, gestational diabetes be visiting in the antenatal clinic so if the blood sugar is controlled the basic principle is routine antenatal visits can continue but if the blood sugar is not controlled or there are other pre existing complications then the visit should be more frequent so agar mahine mein ek dafa usne visit karna tha in a normal pregnancy then she will visit at 15 days of labor so ye basically is ki koi jane now antenatal assessment is for assessment general assessment of pregnancy we do routine antenatal care we manage the blood sugar we monitor the fetal growth by doing frequent ultrasound we look for for complications and we use dexamethasone 12 mg normally we give 12 mg two doses 12 hours apart in this particular case we are going to give 6 mg 12 hourly for two days so that we ensure that 24 mg of dexamethasone is given now this is a list of the glycemic targets for this patient diabetes we have to maintain a target of less than 100 or less than 95 blood sugar fasting one hour post prandial should be less than 140 and two hour post prandial should be less than 120 currently we are monitoring by one hour post prandial which should be less than 140 at all times now let's look at the role of ultrasound in antenatal assessment of our baby so if you look we have put ultrasound actually quite a few times and in every case we might not be able to do or the facility might not uh, be suitable to do so many ultrasound so i will first tell you only the essential ultrasound between 11 and 13 weeks of pregnancy for nuchal thickness 22 weeks of pregnancy for anomaly scan and 36 one at least one anomaly one growth scan at 36 weeks especially to see the abdominal circumference and the fetal weight and this abdominal circumference is important because in patients in whom there is fetal macrosomia the abdominal circumference will be greater than the 90th centile and in babies in whom on ultrasound you find that the abdominal circumference is greater than the 90th centile there is about 80% probability of developing macrosomia macrosomia is a problem for us and why is it a problem because macrosomia is going to result in may result in shoulder dystocia fetal hypoxia brachial plexus injury and certain intrauterine deaths the use of dexamethasone is important for gestational diabetes and the reason it is important is that dexamethasone improves the lung maturity and in diabetic the lung maturity is greatly delayed so that is why it is recommended that antenatal steroids should be given between 24 and 34 weeks of pregnancy 
depending on the need. So as I told you before, 6 mg dexamethasone intramuscular, 12 hourly is recommended for two consecutive days. And you must remember that dexamethasone increases the blood glucose level, but this increase in blood glucose level is transient. So for the next 72 hours after providing dexamethasone, it is important to monitor the blood sugar level and adjust the insulin according to the need of the woman. Now, let's look at the antipartum surveillance that is required from 32 weeks onwards. American College recommends that this is a very crucial period for gestational diabetics. And for them, from 32 weeks onwards, a weekly evaluation should be done. Now, again, I say that the weekly evaluation will be required only in those patients in whom there are other risk factors than poor control of diabetes. Otherwise, a two-weekly examination is enough. But on every examination, American College recommends the clinical examination, both profile, biophysical profile, and non stress test. In our actual clinical practice, we don't follow this regime unless it is a high-risk pregnancy or there is issue with the control of the blood sugar. Now, there is a very important question, and that important question is when should we deliver the patient? Now, Decisions to intervene depend on a couple of factors. Obviously, it depends on the duration of pregnancy, but it also depends on certain variables like glycemic control, like whether the patient is on diet or on insulin, whether there is a macrosomic baby, and if the surveillance parameters are poor. In the left, the picture that you are seeing is there is almost a non-reactive CTG. So this is important in case of a diabetic mother. Now, the general delivery guideline is that vaginal delivery should be the preferred route in most cases, and cesarean section is done only for um, obstetrical reasons. If the control is good and there are no complications, then expectant management can be done within 40 weeks of gestation, and only then induction of labor may be required. In patients in whom there is a poor control, delivery at 38 weeks because of the incidence of shoulder dystocia can be planned. In gestational diabetics who have got hypertension, previous stillbirth, or other complications, again, Delivery over here it is written between 37 and 38 weeks, but generally speaking, around 38 weeks delivery should be planned. Now, just look at the control of the blood sugar, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but just to tell you that there are four ways in which you can control the blood sugar it is the diet, the exercise, the drugs, and insulin. So, hypoglycemic drugs like metformin has recently taken over, and they're also being used for control of diabetes, gestational diabetes blood sugar. So diet and exercise form a very important background. And again, as I am going to re-emphasize, that in women, I have shown on the left hand, I have shown the BMI. And on the right hand, what is the extra amount of calories that are required per kg per day? So if there is a woman who is average or normal BMI, she only needs 30 calories per kg per day in addition to her normal calorie requirement. And that also in the third trimester of pregnancy. So it is very important that the women in diabetes ensure that they are taking the required amount of calories and not extra calories. So the general recommendation is three meals and three snacks, out of which 60% should be complex or high fiber carbohydrates, 20% protein and 20% fat. American College, in addition to this, says that 30 minutes of exercise at least five days a week is very important for control of diabetes in pregnancy. The only thing to avoid is excessive abdominal muscle contraction. Otherwise, exercise is recommended. It can be only in the form of a walk. Metformin, as I told you before, it is being used more frequently for control of diabetes, and it is a very good drug. There are certain limitations. It can sometimes cause GI upset, so it may not be favorable with certain patients. Weight gain will not be as much as it is normal, but that's okay. We can understand that. And in long-term use, there can be vitamin B12 deficiency. Now, how do we start or put the patient up insulin? So any patient who has got a blood sugar more than 95 fasting, one hour more than 140, two hour more than 135 are candidates of insulin therapy. But before putting the patient on insulin, it is important that we try the diet and exercise therapy alone for two weeks. If the blood sugar is uh, uh, mildly high and if it is moderately high, then for one week before putting the patient on insulin. And it also depends on the duration of pregnancy. So let's say after diabetes, diabetes, we keep 35, 36 weeks of pregnancy, then in addition to the diet, we may go in for insulin 
more quickly than you would have gone for insulin if you would have diagnosed with taking that treat at 28 weeks. These are the options for insulin which are available. And if you look at the left-hand column, these are uh, rapid-acting, short-acting, intermediate-acting, and long-acting insulin. Long-acting insulin is in government hospitals, which is seldom used because it is more expensive and not available in the government hospitals. So in the government hospitals, normally we are using short and intermediate acting insulin in terms of the combination of regular and NPH insulin. So what do we do and what are the various regimes that we start with? The first question is how much insulin to give? And a simple formula for starting insulin is the amount of insulin should be body weight in kg divided by two is the amount of insulin by which we should start. So if a woman is weighing 80 kg, you need to give 40 units of insulin as a starting dose. Now, how can that be given? As I told you, that the most common is the combination is NPH and regular insulin. So if you're giving a combination of NPH and regular insulin, you are going to divide that 40 into four divided doses. So 10 units of regular insulin, one with each meal, and 10 units will be given as NPH at bedtime. So this is the most common regime used. Otherwise, there are other ways in which you can also give insulin. But the most common way of starting insulin is weight in kg divided by two. Many example up to the 80 kilograms the aura there, those for divide telling you for two. So 40 are there now. 40 ka matla bhai apne 40 units se shuru karna hai. 40 units ka matla bhai ki ap usko 4 doses mein divide kare. Unme se 3 doses regular insulin ki hongi aur ek NPH ki hongi. Regular insulin milegi har meal ke saath. Or NPH will be given to if you determine time to upper, and NPH is the intermediate acting insulin. And if you cannot control blood sugar by this, then you can increase the level of insulin about 20% every day. So this is a rough formula here of calculation of uh, insulin, how to control the blood sugar. And when we have dexamethasone, I have told you that the blood sugar will increase, so the dose of insulin will need to be increased for three days. Three days means 72 hours. 72 hours ke baad dexa nitrosun ka the peak of glucose hai wo khatam ho jayegi to we can come back to our usual dose of insulin. Now, if you look at the monitoring of blood sugar, so we have monitoring jo karni hai, wo humne karni hai, at least ye perennial ki spreading galat hai. We will monitor the blood sugar one hour postprandial thrice a day, or again the ruwa to we can also monitor blood sugar fasting. So ye jitna bada box hai, is box ki samri bhi ne aapko upar de diye hai that at least three levels of blood sugar should be monitored. Or ham aajkal one hour postprandial karte hain, and in women in whom the blood sugar fasting is high, we also monitor the blood sugar fasting level. And and the level, sorry, I'll take it take you back there. The level should be that. Fasting blood sugar level should be less than 95, and one hour postprandial should be less than 140 milligram per deciliter. Now look at the timing of delivery. Now the question is, कि हमने इनको कैसे deliver करना है, कब करना है? So the basic thing is that diabetes is not an indication for cesarean section, and I told this before as well, and I'm repeating it once again. Well-controlled diabetic or uncomplicated pregnancy, let the woman go into spontaneous labour. And if she doesn't do so, deliver her by 41 weeks. This is uncomplicated, good controlled diabetes. Well controlled gestational diabetes, but if it is controlled by a medical disorder, deliver the patient by 39 weeks. Poorly controlled diabetes or a known diabetic, again deliver between 38 and 39 weeks. So I will divide it again into two categories well controlled and uncomplicated diabetes, deliver by 41. And if the complicated diabetes is yeah, poorly controlled, they deliver between 38 and 39, depending on the situation of the patient and the bishop's score. Now the question is, once these patients deliver, what are we going to do with these patients in the postpartum period? So it is a very important time for diabetics, and there are a lot of things to talk about. So if you look at the risk of delivery, ke paas. so there are maternal risks, and there are new natural risks, and future risks both for the mother and for the baby. So if you look at the immediate risk of the mother, the immediate risk is that if it is a metrosomia, then there is maybe risk of genital tract trauma, postpartum hemorrhage. The mother might have episode of hypoglycemia afterwards and she has a greater probability of developing genital tract infection after delivery. This is the immediate risk. 
लिटिल लेट इज इतने सिवियर है और इतने
of weight before the woman becomes pregnant again. So, in summary, it is very important to screen all the pregnant women. So, all the pregnant women who are presenting to us, they must be screened for gestational diabetes. And we discussed that, that the test for gestational diabetes is oral glucose tolerance test, which is 75 gram OGTT, 26 to 28 weeks of pregnancy. The second thing is that we should be aware of the limitations of self monitored blood glucose and the need to keep a, a, a vigilant eye on the blood sugar levels. The third thing that I think is important to tell over here is that we should not wait too long to shift the patient on insulin if the diet therapy is failure. So if the diet therapy is not an exercise, is not able to control the blood sugar in one to two weeks, it means that either we need to put the patient on oral hypoglycemic or insulin needs to be started. And insulin, if you once give it to the patient, it does not mean that insulin dependent or the insulin requirement delivery ke baat ho And the last message is that we have to ensure that these women must have postpartum OGT and when they plan the next pregnancy, they must come to us. I think over here I will stop and I'm open for questions if you have any questions. Any questions? Quick questions, eh? Okay, if there are no questions, then I'll end it over here. I'll see you tomorrow at 8 o'clock, sir.